Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. I'd like to welcome you to my uh, welcome lecture um, for the course uh, Info 780-201 in the fall of 2016. This is the lecture where I uh, kind of introduce the course and go over the syllabus. And right now what we're looking at is the index page of our weekly schedule. Uh, the weekly schedule is a little application that I use for all my courses to uh, to organize the information on uh, what the assignments are, what's due. Um, it's also a place where I, I can put the links to the resources that you're going to need to uh, do your work for that week. Um, as of right now, I have uh, populated week one for our course. And the way that you get there is you go down to the numeral, or, uh, numeral under week number and click on it. And you'll see that this is our schedule for week one. Okay. Um, uh, typically, you would be able to navigate to week two by clicking on next. But I've not populated that week yet. I'm teaching five courses this fall and I've got a lot of things going. Um, I hope to have all these things uh, populated within the next week. And in any case, uh, I will be able to uh, populate things before you need them. Okay, so let's look at our schedule for week one before we go further. Okay. Uh, on uh, Tuesday evening, which actually turns about out to be this evening, um, we're going to have our first uh, online office hours uh, session. And um, online office hours is the thing that I actually started with this course uh, oh, uh, a year and a half ago. Um, I, I didn't like the idea that we would have a uh, kind of a practical course online and we wouldn't have the opportunity to be kind of online at the same time where we could talk. Uh, so what I did is I developed these optional sessions and I've called them a number of things and more recently I've called them online office hours and it's a chance for us to get together and talk and be able to share our uh, data and we use the go to meeting uh, platform and um, our sessions are scheduled on Tuesdays from 6:30 to 8 and um, here's what a typical week would be like um, first of all we'll say hi uh, then uh, we will go over any coding assignments that were due uh, from the week before, okay? And when we go over them, here's what we normally do. We normally, uh, I ask uh, for volunteers to show us their solutions. Um, and uh, we keep talking about the problems and the solutions until we're comfortable that we kind of understand everything. Um, I will have at this point posted my solutions uh, to our uh, D2L page. And to the extent that my solutions are different than the ones that you guys show, then I'll show mine too. Um, we have a number of other things that come up on a weekly basis. We have a project that you're going to be working on um, that's going to be due at the end of the semester. People have questions about how to select their project or what kind of projects would qualify. They have technical questions. Um, they're having problems with the coding assignment for the current week. And we, we take the time to help everybody out, okay? Now, it's an optional session. I realize that not everybody will be able to join us every week. So, uh, over the summer, I started the practice of recording these and posting the link to the recording online. And uh, I typically will post uh, a, a post it the next day. So if we're doing this uh, this evening, Tuesday evening, then I'll be uh, posting it uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. 
Okay, so then you'll be able to go to the weekly schedule and find it. Now, how do you know if things have changed in the weekly schedule application? Well, um, I'll tell you. Okay, so what I typically do when I when I uh, I uh, change content in the weekly schedule is I go to the D2L page and I post a news item, and I describe what's uh, changed in the schedule, and then I take the text of the news item and I send it out to everybody in an email. So you should be able by monitoring your email, you should be able to know uh, when things change in the course content. Um, one thing I want to point about, out about these, uh, the online office hours before we move off of that is that uh, the feedback that I get about online office hours uh, from people who participate is uh, universally favorable. Um, they like uh, being in touch with uh, me. They like being in touch with each other. Uh, they'd like the chance to talk through some of these uh, questions that they have. Um, and uh, so uh, give it a try, okay? Um, I'd love to see you there. Uh, this being an online course, our schedule for the week uh, starts on Monday morning, uh, except for this week when it started uh, this morning on Tuesday morning because of the holiday. It starts on Monday morning and it run through, runs through Sunday night. And so uh, you'll see that the second schedule box on this schedule page is for a weekly assignments uh, deadline. And that's on Sunday, th this week, Sunday, September 11th at 11.55 p.m. So that's when the work for the week needs to be done. So what kind of things are in the schedule for the week? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I list the topics. So this week we're doing introductions. Uh, I'm having you set up the Oxygen XML editor. Uh, there are two lectures. Uh, what is XML and how is XML used? Uh, and we're going to be uh, practicing using the Oxygen XML editor. Um, there's a computing setup assignment, which is uh, the installation of uh, uh, the Oxygen XML editor. And to the extent that you need a license to do that, um, there's a copy of the license on our D12 page. Um, and to the extent that you would like to watch a tutorial on how to do that, I have a tutorial on doing it with, uh, under Windows and one on doing it under, uh, Mac OS X. Um, and, uh, I made these videos, I think about a year ago. Perhaps I made them you know, last spring. I'm not really sure. Um, but these are pretty well up to date. Um, it, it, if you follow the tutorials, um, what you may see is you may see me install, say, version uh, 16 of the Oxygen XML editor, whereas the current version is... Uh, I happen to know is version 17.1. We'll certainly go ahead and install the most recent version of whatever. Okay, so I've got those uh, tutorials there. Uh, the readings, okay. Uh, the syllabus, which we'll be going through in just a minute. Uh, and uh, uh, the reading for this week in Harold and Means, which is entitled XML in a Nutshell, which is one of my, uh, probably my favorite XML book. I'm having you read uh, chapter one, which is called Introducing XML. So we're just getting ourselves started this uh, week. Um, recordings come next, and this is where I put the lectures and the tutorials. And um, the, uh, 
there is this introductory lecture, which I actually don't see um, on uh, the list. So I'm going to have to get that on there when I post this. Uh, and then there's the lectures. Uh, oh, there's the introductory lecture. It's up there. It says that it's uh, not posted yet, which, of course, it's not. We're still recording it. Then uh, we've got uh, the lecture on uh, what is XML and how is it used. Um, I hope you enjoy that. Um, there are some slides that I show during that. So I have those listed under other resources if you want to be able to uh, review the slides. And then um, uh, typically I have a tutorial on that is related to the skills practice of the week. And I see that the the tutorial for the skills uh, practice uh, is up under required recordings, whereas I probably ought to pull it down and put it under coding assignments due. Because the coding assignment you're going to do for this uh, week is to do your resume in the XML dialect of HTML called XHTML. And um, I need to get the instructions up today, the grading rubric up today. The solution is going to be up next week. Okay, and this is pretty simple stuff. And the uh, tutorial um, really addresses the same thing. You'll see me do the resume. And um, in this case, uh, it, we're not trying to challenge your abilities in HTML and CSS, uh, although if you have good abilities there and you'd like to show them off, well, what the hey, I'd love to see them. Um, so I've got modest expectations about your web design skills, but what I really want you to do is to use a, an XML um, tag set or XML application that uh, is going to be pretty familiar to you um, uh, and that's why we use XHTML. So we're going to be using that to uh, practice. Um, and in terms of class uh, participation assignments do these are forum posts. I want you to post to the introduce yourself forum um, and uh, we've got sort of a list of the different things that we would like you to post. So that is the schedule for this week. There are going to, there's going to be uh, more uh, content on uh, the weekly schedule site by the end of the week or a week from now. It's probably a little more likely. Uh, I hope to get it all populated. And um, in the meantime, please consider uh, coming by online office hours th this evening, if only to say hi. Um, it's okay to pop in and say hi and then leave. I mean, it, it's it's not uh, uh, it's not rude. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. All right. So let's talk about the syllabus. Uh, here's the syllabus, so the name of the course, XML for Libraries. Uh, it's section 201. I do have one student who was originally registered for the face-to-face uh, -face version of this course. We'd really hoped that we were going to be able to offer it on uh, campus on Tuesday evenings. And there just aren't enough of you here to make that work. Um, so uh, that person is has been moved into the online section. Although I think they're, I think you're officially still in the face-to-face -face one. Uh, but um, uh, so we're all going to be using the uh, D2L for the online section 780201. Uh, it's an online course. Here are the particulars for me. Uh, Kevin Trainer is my name. My email's here. 
my mobile phones here and this is the only phone that I use so I'm here in my office at UWM and there is a phone that I can look over and see I don't know the number of it and I haven't answered it in over a year and I never look for messages so don't call that one okay and my home phone is even worse so my landline at home um, I'm not even sure where that instrument is I definitely don't know what the number is and I definitely never check the messages so call my mobile I've been giving out the number to students for 10 years and you haven't worn me out yet so I'm gonna keep doing it I have an office at SOAS on the third floor uh, in the Northwest Quad. I'm not too far from the administrative offices on the third floor, which I affectionately call the nurses uh, station. Um, so come by and see me if you're here. Uh, I'm typically, I'm going to be in my office uh, in the fall semester on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm only teaching one face-to-face -face course. I'm teaching three online courses. So I'll be working from home on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll be working here in the office on uh, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, so if you're around, uh, feel free to come by and say hi. Um, I think I talked quite a bit about online office hours already, so I'm not going to add anything here. The course. Um, uh, the course, let's see. I actually wrote this uh, general description myself, so I'm thinking you're going to, I think it's pretty descriptive, so let's just go through it. It's an introduction to XML technologies and tools with a special emphasis on XML applications, that's XML tag sets, of greatest interest to the LIS community. Students will learn to author XML documents, how to compose them, to design content models for XML applications, how to design them, to author W3C XML schemas, so how to come up with a schema for your document design, and to validate XML document using schemas. So we're gonna learn all those things. You'll learn to design and code XML transformation using XSLT and XPath, uh, to create web documents using XHTML and CSS or to create high quality print documents with XSLFO. So one of the big uh, uses of XML is uh, in uh, publishing. Okay? And what you typically do in XML based uh, publishing is that you um, you take your content and you mark it up with some tag set um, that uh, reflects the meaning and the structure in the content and then you transform it with an XSLT transformation program or style sheet um, it's called a style sheet, but it's sort of very much a program. And what comes out of that is uh, either what goes into the browser, uh, XHTML and CSS, or what goes into a high quality print formatter like XSLFO. And we're going to learn how to do both of those. Okay? It's very tangible, it's fun. Okay? Um, if you enjoyed uh, uh, a web design class, uh, you're going to love this because it's just so much more powerful. Um, students will be introduced to a variety of XML applications of interest to the LIS the community. So we're going to do a survey of them. Uh, and they will execute a proof of concept project based upon one of these XML applications. So there's a project due at the end of the semester, and you get to pick the XML tag set that it's uh, based upon, really based upon what your interests are, okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Okay, text. There are two printed texts 
that you should be getting uh, copies of. Um, I think these are two books. If you're going to be a person who's going to use XML, these are definitely two books that you want to have on your bookshelf. So the first one is by uh, Harold and Means. Uh, Harold being the famous Elliot Rusty Harold. Um, XML in a nutshell. Uh, probably the second XML book I ever read. This is the third edition. I probably read the first one uh, long ago. Uh, my favorite XML book. And the, uh, the second one by Michael K. XSLT 2.0 and XPath 2.0, uh, the programmer's reference. This is a very big and dry book. It's a good value for the money. Uh, and it answers, it's really a, a reference book. So if you're going to learn XSLT, um, you're going to need this book. Okay? Um, so... I love both of these books, and I highly recommend them. Uh, the rest of the text, we have some optional text and other resources. Um, there's the BACA Introduction to Metadata, and that's an online document. Uh, for those of you who uh, intend to be uh, catalogers or metadata librarians, uh, uh, my colleagues from Illinois, uh, uh, Tim Cole and M.K. Hahn, uh, uh, wrote a book called XML for Catalogers and Metadata Librarians. Um, it has some overlap with the, uh, with the other books that we have, but it, j it just has a lot of... Uh, Really good particular stuff of interest, of interest to catalogers and uh, uh, metadata librarians. And if that's going to be you, this is a book that I think that's worth getting. Um, and then Miller and Clark, uh, Putting XML to Work in the Library, Tools for Improving Access and Management. Um, is a pretty good book too and i think that miller and clark if i'm remembering right is available online through the uwm libraries i may have to call them and tell them to turn that on again so if you're trying to find that and you can't get it please uh send me an email we've got three articles that we're going, i'm sorry four <laughs> articles that we're going to read uh, Burns, Gilmore, Rhino, and Shrimplin. And these are all um, early articles from, um, uh, well, except for Burns, which is a little more recent. But for the most part, these are early articles on the use of I XML by the LIS uh, community. So, um, on one hand, uh, they're getting a little old. On the other hand, um, XML's been around, <laughs> okay? Uh, it's not that new, <laughs> all right? I guess XML uh, came out in uh, 1998, right? It's been around for a long time, so it's been around uh, nearly 20 years. So. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the early talk about how is this going to help us in the LIS world, well, that was going on in the early 2000s. All right, so those are a couple of articles that I've assigned throughout the uh, semester to give you um, eh, some a better sense of what uh, people in the field think about how XML fits into our uh, tool set. Okay, now we're going to talk about course topics. This course has, has interesting origins, okay? Um, 
Uh, quite a bit of the early part of the course is a course that I've been teaching in industry since uh, 2002. Okay, so a long time. So uh, the early lectures like uh, what is XML, how is XML used, designing and coding XML documents for data interchange, those kinds of uh, chapters. These are uh, chapters that were adapted from a previous version of uh, the Harold and Means book. And uh, I've been teaching people with this uh, in uh, industry for a long time. Um, uh, then we have a bunch of things, and that includes all those early uh, chapters. It includes uh, things like um, uh, schemas for data interchange, schemas for publishing. Um, let's see what's down on the next page. Um, XSLT for data interchange, XSLT for publishing, exploring X query. That was all part of my standard uh, corporate training XML curriculum. And then when I adapted this course for uh, uh, the iSchool, I added in a bunch of topics that have to do with um, the use of XML in the LIS uh, field. So we have a series of topics in here that uh, represent XML applications for that are of interest to people in the LIS field, including encoded archival description, EAD, uh, EPUB, uh, MODS, uh, TEI, Mets, DocBook, Mark XML, Darwin Information Typing Architecture, or DITA, um, and uh, categories for the description of works of art, uh, CDWA, and also, uh, sorry, OAI uh, PMH. Uh, okay, so that is a uh, kind of a survey of uh, some of the most important XML tag sets and uh, uh, communities that have formed around them that you might be interested in, okay? Um, so, um, uh, what I try to do is I try to be pretty hands-on uh, throughout the course. So, um, we try, we're going to be building um, there are a bunch of skills, uh, practice-oriented uh, coding assignments that we're going to do as we go through the course. And uh, you're going to learn by doing. And typically the learning will work like this. The lecture will uh, kind of introduce the topic. And then there will be a coding assignment for the week. And uh, before you do the coding assignment, I typically have a uh, tutorial for you to watch in which I, um, I kind of do the same skill, but not for the same problem. Well, a couple times I do the same problem. But uh, I typically do the same thing, but not for the same problem. And then you should be able to uh, follow my lead and use that approach for... Um, the coding assignment for the week, okay? Uh, and then, of course, you're going to hand that in, and then we'll uh, talk about the solutions um, uh, the next time we get together for online office hours. All right? Uh, course outcomes. Here's what I'd like you to be able to do when the course is over, okay? Um, Author an XML document that is valid and well-formed. Design and code an XML document schema using the W3C XML schema language. Val validate content in XML documents with W3C XML schemas. 
design and code XML transformation uh, programs or style sheets as they're called using XSLT and XPath. Generate well-formed web documents from XML content using XSLT, XHTML, and CSS. Generate high-quality print documents from XML content using XSLT and XSLFO. Analyze a collection of XML content documents using XQuery. Identify significant XML applications of interest to the LIS community and plan and conduct a proof of concept project using XML technologies and an XML application of interest to the LIS community. Okay, so that's a pretty tall order um, for a one semester course and yet uh, I think this is the third time I'm teaching this course. Uh, people, get, people are doing a good job, okay? And um, um, I have confidence that you'll do a good job too, all right? So what are the methods that we use? Well, readings, uh, recorded lectures and uh, tutorial demonstrations, um, the text-based uh, discussion in D12, voice-based online discussion via the online office hours, and then of course the planning and execution of your individual proofs, proof of concept uh, project. There's a lot to be learned in the project. Okay, let's talk about the schedule. Okay, we've already seen the schedule. We actually got here through the schedule, right? Uh, schedule. All right, so go go back here. So that's the schedule. And uh, what we have here is a link to the schedule. All right, so that's how you get to it. All right, now, whenever I change content for the course, I add content, I make any kind of change, I announce it. I go to the D2L site and I put up a news item. Then I copy the news item and uh, into an email and I send it to all of you. Okay, so you should be able to monitor your email and know any changes that are happening in the course. This includes um, every time I post a link to a video, I will announce that as well. So you don't have to keep uh, checking back all the time. You can just watch your email, which of course I do on my iPhone and I hope you have a similar capability. Uh, okay, work required of students. There's a lot of work here. Um, and exactly how much work is going to depend on how familiar you are with these kind of tools and just how facile you are. Uh, there's, of course, you have to do the reading. Of course, you have to listen to the lectures. Um, I'm hoping you're going to come to the online office hours. But of course, in addition to that, you have the work on your... Uh, coding assignments and the work on your project. And uh, uh, this, uh, some people are faster than others, okay? Um, what kind of makes up for that is the people who are faster tend to sign up for more challenging uh, projects or they tend to want to embellish and elaborate on their solutions. So I'm not sure they spend any less time, but maybe they get a little more work done. But um, so there's there's a lot of uh, uh, variation in how quickly you can do this, and you'll get faster throughout the semester. Uh, what are the elements of the course? Well, we have the readings, okay, uh, and the readings will typically be uh, from one of the two required texts. Um, uh, they might be uh, one of the articles that I showed you. Or it could be, uh, I have a number of links uh, to supplementary readings, especially for um, the topics that relate to the XML applications of interest to uh, people in the, in the LIS field. Okay, so um, 
you don't have to hunt down resources on that. I give you your first couple um, uh, right in the schedule and you're able to click through and to read them. Okay, and if you want to know more, well, um, uh, it's, uh, I'm sure you can find these things at least as well as I can. Uh, the recordings that we're going to be doing are either going to be a lecture like this or they're going to be a tutorial video. Um, they're going to appear in the weekly schedule. I assume that you'll do the readings before you listen to the recordings and I assume that you'll uh, listen to or watch the recordings before you do your coding assignments. Okay? I just think that that probably is the best workflow. Um, each coding assignment is going to have uh, really pretty much everything you need there. There'll be instructions. There may be starter files. In some cases there are. Um, there uh, typically there's a tutorial video which shows me not doing this problem but a similar one. Uh, and there is a grading rubric as well. Okay? Um, participation. Well, participation is an important part of the class. So, um, there are four online postings that I want you to make. Okay? Uh, that are required. One is uh, posting to the Introduce Yourself uh, forum that I'm going to expect you to do this week in week one. And I want you to post three posts to the Final Project forum. Okay, and these, these posts should have to do with your, your insights into these LIS related XML applications from the point of view of is this something I'm likely to use? Is this something I'd like to do a project on? Okay, and I'm looking for uh, significant posts uh, 200 to 300 uh, words. Okay, so we have all the weeks in the semester and uh, of which there are 16 overall. And um, I want you to post on three of those potential topics. Okay. Uh, so you're expected to read all the posts from your classmates and then um, uh, to discuss them as as appropriate. We've had, historically we've had some very good d discussions in this part of the project where people are trying to get a handle on exactly what this XML application would do for me. Um, I've had people trying to choose between maybe TEI or DocBook for instance and we've had some really good conversations uh, both on the D2L uh, forum and in the online office hours. Uh, so, we, and then of course we have online office hours. So all these uh, participation things are going to earn you uh, participation credit, right? Uh, so please do, because uh, participation, I think, let's peek ahead, is 10% uh, of the grade. So that's a letter grade. That's the difference between uh, a B or an A or a C or a B. So um, certainly worth the time to do. Um, this brings us to our final project. Okay. So each student is ex expected to plan and conduct a proof of concept project using XML technology. Detailed instructions and a grading rubric for the final project, uh, project will be published separately. I, I plan to have those all finished up and ready to go by October 1st at the latest. Um, but here's some highlights. Okay. 
Uh, the projects must be based upon a standard XML schema rather than a schema that is designed by the student from scratch. A lot of the work that we're going to be doing th uh, throughout the semester is going to be with custom schemas, okay? And that's really important to know how to do, okay? But the, um, these standard schemas are a big deal, and they provide a lot of leverage, okay? When you adopt one, you get, uh, first of all, you don't have to create the schema. Uh, second of all, you get the body of knowledge about that schema. And, uh, and with most of these, there's a whole community of people who are supporting that schema. And they're, uh, you know, uh, supporting it with uh, books, with articles, with uh, blogs with uh, 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 mailing lists, with training, the whole bit. So these are a real important aspect of XML. So I want you to pick one of these standard schemas to do your project on. Uh, then you have to you have to get some content, okay? Now, uh, where do you get your content? Well, it might be content that's already in your power. Either something you authored yourself. I've had some students who uh, had written poetry or had written uh, uh, fiction, okay? And they wanted to uh, publish it, okay? Well, uh, great, that was their content. I've had some students who had some content for their job that they needed to be able to publish for their job. Um, so maybe they didn't own the content themselves, but their employer did. And then there's just tons of content in the public domain. The most uh, useful or easily accessible example of that is the content that's available through Project uh, Gutenberg. Uh, so, what I want you to do is to find content and to mark up enough of that to provide a uh, proof of concept. Now, we go through this every semester. How much is enough? Well, let's say you're doing a book. Like, I've had some people who are uh, publishing a book using uh, EPUB. Okay, and so where do they get the book? They get it from Project Gutenberg. Um, so how much of it are they going to do? Well, not just one chapter, uh, all right? Probably do three chapters, four chapters. Three or four or five of anything it turns out to be a good kind of a uh, number. So maybe did they do the front matter um, and they do four chapters. Uh, something like that, all right? Um, maybe somebody's doing something like they're using uh, uh, CDWA to um, describe a collection of artworks, okay? Well, maybe you'll describe a small collection, okay? If your collection is too big, to be just a proof of concept. Well, maybe it's just a subset of that collection. Okay, and what do you do? You mean, uh, could you describe, say, 10 works? Yeah, 10 works would be a lot. Uh, say five, uh, five is about right. Okay, so you gotta find the content and then you have to mark it up, okay? Um, the next part is, um, is, interesting because it depending upon the the approach that you're taking um, you may have an easy path towards uh, publishing your content with an XML workflow for instance if you're using EPUB okay um, there are EPUB readers. So you need to compose the document. You need to transform it to the point where you've created a proper EPUB files. You can do that with the Oxygen XML editor. Uh, but then um, how do you read them? Well, you read them with an EPUB 
reader. Okay, let's say that you're publishing something using DocBook. Okay, again, there are a bunch of um, publicly available XSLT transformations for turning a doc book into um, a series of HTML pages or into a PDF, okay? You just have to be able to find your way to them and run them. What if, you, um, what if you're working uh, in a... Um, what if you're working in something that doesn't have one of these standard XSLT transformations? Although most of these uh, standard schemas do, well, then you're going to have to write one in XSLT. Okay, so there has to be a way to publish your content because what we want here is a workflow, and on the back end is published uh, content. So the deliverables of the project will include marked up the, the, the content, uh, code, some of it code that you wrote, some of it code that might be standard available XSLT code, uh, some of it might be standard XLT code that is even shipped as part of the Oxygen XML editor, uh, and a written project report. Um, the project report is kind of a report on your learning experience, okay? It also includes a manifest of all the things that you're turning in and instructions on how to run a test, okay? So a copy, uh, a combination of that stuff and a report on your learning experience. Uh, the detailed instructions in the grading rubric for the final project will be made available by October 1st. Oh, oh, okay, we can talk about it long before October 1st. Okay, I just have made the commitment to upgrade the materials and get them fully published by October 1st, and maybe sooner. Grading, okay. Um, we already talked about the participation, 10% of the grade. Coding assignments, 45% of the grade. Final project, the other 45% of the grade. Uh, the project code, and by the code, I, I mean the content, all that kind of stuff, uh, 35%. Uh, and by uh, the project report is going to be 10%. So. Those are of the final grade. So the, the final project has a 45% total uh, weight. Okay, so it's a pretty big deal. So 90% um, of the grade is, on, is for stuff that you're going to do. Okay? Now, one thing I didn't talk about already that I, I'd like to... Uh, well, I'll go back in a minute. Uh, there's a list here of how I'm going to translate number grades into letter grades. I, I borrowed this from one of my colleagues and I think it's pretty standard, so nothing surprising uh, here. Okay, so before I talk about the academic policies, let me back up and talk about these coding assignments because there is there's an aspect of the coding assignments that I think I forgot to discuss explicitly here, and that's how they're going to be graded, okay? Now, uh, some people are uh, really facile with these, these kinds of uh, coding assignments. They've been doing this kind of coding before, and it's going to come easy. Uh, other people are going to learn uh, slower, okay? What I do know is that the um, the schedule I have for you, the, the things I have you doing in what order, they, that works particularly well if you do uh, this. If you uh, watch the lecture and do the reading, okay? And then before you do the coding assignment, you watch the uh, tutorial demo. Okay, and then you go and do the coding assignment, okay, and turn it in on time, okay? 
some of these things are well in fact all of these things are going to look easy once you see the answer okay so people who don't hold the, hand things in on time will have the opportunity to see the answers well then it's not so challenging okay and you don't really learn because um you know the situation that you're going to be in is you're going to be doing these things on your own in the in the real world and you're going to want to be fairly self-reliant or you're going to want to know how to um, access your support infrastructure to to get the job done so the deal that i have is if you um hand your assignment in on time and if you make a good faith effort to do the assignment which is to say that you provide a, a, evidence that you really tried to do all the parts of the assignments and if you follow directions which is if we said to hand in a file that has this kind of name and this kind of structure you hand it you follow those uh, directions you'll have a great guarantee on your coding assignments of a minimum 85 okay so even if you go in and things completely fall apart you're going to get at least an 85 provided that you do it on time you show evidence of good faith effort and you follow directions okay because how are you going to learn well even if you've had a very difficult time when we turn the week and we come to online office hours and we go through the solution that's where a lot of learning is going to go on for people who it got it done and everything was uh, right it'll confirm that they did well for people who struggled a bit well they'll see some things that they didn't see for people who got completely stuck they'll see how to get unstuck okay and that's where the learning goes on so uh, if you uh, follow those requirements you get a minimum of, of 85 if you turn it in late and we'll accept these things up to a week late um, you'll get a maximum of 84. So y y you really want to do them on time, okay? And after a week late, then we're going to go down to zero because when you do these things of late, it really doesn't work out, okay? So um, give it the good graduate school try by the deadline, follow the directions, and... Um, worst case you're going to get an 85 uh, best case you're going to get 100 and people get hundreds you know people um these are not really geared to uh uh you know to flummox you there there are a lot of assignments where most people get 100 because they um well they're that good Okay, so that's the grading deal for the coding assignments. I'm sorry I didn't explain that directly in the uh, syllabus. Uh, apparently, I dropped that section <laughs> from last year. I uh, have to get that back in there. And then, uh, let's see, that brings us down to UWM and SOAS academic policies. And I, I want to say two things about these. One is that these are important because they're all about really important stuff okay so if you had and and two these are the same in all of my syllabi and um they're probably the same in most of the syllabi for most of the the instructors here at uh uh, uh SOAS. so on one hand if you're well acquainted with all this stuff um, and you understand it and you have no issues well then fine on the other hand if you're not acquainted get acquainted and if you have an issue where you need some help well I'm here okay so we have things in here on um, uh, uh, general policies on policies having to do with students with uh, disabilities on people who uh, need to have religious observances observances that are not already uh, taken into account in the university calendar 
uh, students who are called to active military duty, um, the, uh, uh, the policy on incompletes is here. And I've got to tell you, uh, the UWM policy on incompletes is fairly strict. So that's worth a read if you haven't done it already. Uh, discriminatory contact is, uh, uh, conduct is, is really a, addresses the, the set of expectations we have for behavior. And um, uh, this is pretty important to us. It's important to us that people uh, feel safe, that people feel um, respected and um, the people know that we're serious about that. So um, if you need to acquaint yourself with the expectations with regard to this, then uh, please do. And if you have any problems or issues, please come forward, I'm here to help. Um, the same kind of comments um, uh, as they relate to the academic misconduct uh, policy, if you're well acquainted with the academic honor code and the expectations there, uh, great. If not, then please get acquainted. And the last couple of things, uh, there's a procedure for complaints. It's always good to know about that. And there's the procedure for grade appeals. So um, if those are appropriate for you, then uh, that's where your information is. Uh, so we've come to the end of the syllabus and that brings me back to just wanting to wrap up uh i love this course okay i use xml in my workflow as an instructor and as a system designer and developer uh all the time Okay, so for instance, the, uh, the weekly schedule application is uh, created with XML and XSLT. Um, the, the system that we use to uh, send you feedback on your coding assignments uh, uses XML, XSLT and XSLFO. This technology makes my life easier every day. Okay, I believe in it. I mean, it's it's just cool stuff, and I think that other people should have the benefit of this uh, of these great tools. And I'm out to show people in the world especially you, how to do it. And I love doing it. And I'm hoping that um, this opportunity is, is going to be um, as enjoyable for you as it is for me. Because uh, this, uh, for me, is fun stuff. And um, I'm hoping it's going to be fun for you too. So having said that, I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.